Good evening. Welcome to Minority Kokosa. It's a Monday evening. Thank you very much for having us in your homes. Uh, tonight, <clears throat> we want to talk about Kumasi post the NDC Congress. But before then, uh, events are unfolding very rapidly on the Electoral Commission parliamentary front to do with the creation or establishment of new constituencies, 45 to be exact. For me, basically, I think where it's gotten to, it's become a question, uh, more of a political question, much more than a legal question, because time, questions are being raised about timing and the potential for chaos if it's not organized in a very orderly manner. Now, you will find that our reputation for good governance has not been had on a silver platter. Uh, we've had periods of difficulty with governance, we've gone through military rule, we've had quasi-authoritarian regimes, we've had outright authoritarian regimes, to the point where we now have a constitution, we can proudly say we've had five, five, six elections, and all of them reasonably well. Not perfect, but run by this EC under the leadership of Dr. Farijan, so far so good, reasonably well. Now, Ghana was bold enough to accede to the uh, African peer review mechanism. And part of the reason we were bold enough to do that was because we had opened up in transparency and our electoral systems were getting robust and well. Now we have a situation where we simply don't understand why we are approaching a point of non-convergence. We are all approaching that point where things don't seem to be going quite right. If Parliament they don't have a problem sitting on CI 73 and we're prepared to come back and sit on CI 73. How do they walk into parliament and find a completely new instrument before them, CI 77? And that has compelled the minority to boycott parliament so that the proper thing is done. CI 73 is withdrawn and CI 77 laid properly in order to run the number of days required to bring the 45 consensus into law. And you cannot create legal entities with illegal procedures. It's as simple as that. So if all these procedural difficulties are going on, and you get to the point where you realize that the procedural processes are such that it's difficult to conclude them in time, to bring the consensus into being for the election, then why are you rushing us to that situation? You have an electronic register that you are now trying to shape up and all that. Where it has got into, I'm afraid, I believe His Excellency, Mr. President, is becoming a political question, and he may have to talk to a few people on his side of the divide and determine whether or not we can come to a consensus. Essentially, between now and December, there's very little His Excellency can do to change the substantial situation as far as Ghanaians are concerned. The best legacy he can leave us is to give us a good quality election free from chaos and that is a challenge that he must bear as president meanwhile the ruling party was in kumasi and all sorts of claims were made about their assuming the stronghold of the mpp as theirs there was a bit of a brouhaha about posters and whose posters were where and all that i mean i thought just to titillate our senses we will get it from the Kumasi perspective, those who were actually there when all these things went on. So with me in the studio tonight, uh, to my immediate left, William Orekuedu, who is the MPP parliamentary candidate for Kwabri West. And uh, he is still in, in mourning, sort of, because <laughs> the MP he's replacing, we unfortunately have lost. And that is uh, the Honorable Uswansa, whose funeral will be this weekend. But probably the more interesting uh, family bit about him is that he's related to Bafu Akutu, the illustrious uh, fighter wow. for liberty in Ghana. Roku, you are welcome. Thank you very Minority much indeed. Caucus. Thank you and um, good evening to your church. Viewers. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Next to him is Gideon Buakun, who is the Ashanti Regional Youth Organizer. 
Uh, Gideon is a firebrand. <laughs> <laughs> Gideon is an MPP firebrand. Very, very powerful. Oh, when, yeah. when we say youth, these are the youth, you not you. the you white head you. youth. You That's for the white head youth. They are just <laughs> trying to intrude on your territory. But okay. Gideon, you've been doing quite a bit of work in Ashanti. I'm Congratulations. Grateful. Grateful. Yes, the party is grateful to you. I'm honored. Mm. I'm honored. You're very, very welcome to Minority Caucus. Thank uh, you. For both of you, this is your first time. Yeah. Yeah, but before we get into the Ashanti matters, Gideon, what, what do you make of this easy business? I mean, where are we headed? Well, I think that first and foremost, I have to um, say good evening to your viewers, and the people of Ashanti region, especially the NPP folks. Yeah. In fact, they are very much enthused about this program, and they think that it's a program that offers the platform for the political education, especially on the Danka Dombo Buzia tradition. Mm -hmm. um, talking about these 45 constituencies and the bruhaha and the fury that is generated, I think that it's important that all of us as Ghanaians, mm -hmm. we come to agree that when right things ought to be done, they ought to be done. Mm -hmm. And I personally have problems when Ghanaians at certain points in time leave certain genuine national issues to the corridors of only politicians. I don't get it. William Shakespeare says something, and I think that it should remind all of us of one common thing. What he said is that we all ought to repent for the actions that we take, not merely for the vitriolic words and actions of the bad people, but for the appalling silence of the good ones. Mm -hmm. Look at these constituencies that are going to be created within three months to elections. Common sense, the principles of common sense and fair dispensation even suggest that somebody ought to sit down and think that indeed, yes, this might be an ideal situation, something that we need, ideally we need this, but the reality of it does not support the ideal situation. And so let us rethink, because look, we want to create 45 constituencies three months into election. In fact, by the time the airline matures, it will be less than... See, yes, as I speak with you today, yeah. the electoral commissioner mm. has issued out registration forms to existing parliamentary candidates to fail. Awaiting that, these new constituencies will be created and new candidates will come and fill the forms. Why is the electoral commission giving out forms today? Because he thinks it expedient to let the people fill the forms today because of the brevity and the exigencies of time. Yeah. We don't have time on our side. And it would be so clumsy an atmosphere for us as gay to go through this process and politicians alike, to go through this process of selecting parliamentary candidates, going around campaigning and showcasing new candidates to the electors. The electors cannot make informed judgment and decision on which parliamentary candidate to vote for. And mind you, these are the candidates who are supposed to be the representative of the people. The people need to have ample time, think about the personality, the ideals, the views of all these candidates before they make a choice on who to represent them. And I have problems. When people sit down and sing protests on the electoral commission and say that, oh, this is the electoral commission that has been there with us since 1992 during the fourth Republican constitution. It has been a credible electoral commission. Who tells you? that we have had 90% or 100% electoral processes free, of, uh, free from all uh, the skirmishes and the shenanigans of politicians in the election that we've been having. Ghana's election have been riddled and fraught with a lot of difficulties and challenges. Yet we come and paint a very good picture by the Electoral Commission. But hey, who says that? The Electoral Commission, so much touted Electoral Commission his credentials, cannot fault at any point in time. So we all need to sit up and think. I think that this is the time for civil to come up. They shouldn't leave it to only the opposition political. And this is so much craving for these constituencies to be created. It is only out of political witchcraft that anybody... Political exactly, witchcraft. It is only out of <laughs> That's that. That's interesting. It's only out of that. Mm. Because look, they are behaving like that hard blast against vampires who need these constituencies for something greater to happen to them in the 2012 elections. If the NDC thinks very well that it has performed so much and Ghanaians can attest to the developmental credentials that they tell the better Ghana agenda, which are more or less in operation, we don't see them. If they believe so much in it, why would you want to gerrymand 
and make sure that these constituencies are created so that they get some majority seats in parliament and then even when the election goes into a second round the last time it was very funny at Kumasi Sports Stadium when the general secretary was talking about a second round election then the president who is the leader says that I disagree <laughs> with the general secretary it's going to be one time it tells you latently mm. that the NDC admits mm. that they cannot win this election on first round and this is the first time under the fourth Republican constitution that a political party which is in government mm. upon the end of his first term thinks that he cannot win first round. Rollins in 1996, during his first term, won first round. Kufo 2004, won first round. So what is so wrong with the NDC thinking very well that this election will go into a second round? It is a tacit admission of the fact that they clearly know that they cannot win this election, mm. and so they need to do certain things, uh, operate some shenanigans and stuff to make sure that people, they get some votes from somewhere, either parliamentary seats, so that in the event, unfortunate event that is going to second round, then they can manage their way through and, yeah, you know, yeah. strengthen the, the, their way through. But I think that it's not going to be proper. I think that the honorable thing for the Electoral Commission and this government to do is to say that, yes, we need these constituencies because the premise that we have set up is that Oh, when government creates districts, let us also create constituencies to equalize the situation. This is the creation of the Electoral Commission. It is not backed by law. It the is not enshrined in any statute act, book of this country. Act 462 says that, uh, that's 67 of Act 462, says that no member of a district assembly should belong to two districts exactly. at the same time. Exactly. And it's on the basis of that exactly. that the EC determines that if there is a district, then there must be a constituency, which is contingent, because exactly. otherwise you have one MP representing two districts. Exactly. But but the MP is not even a voting it, member of the district. Exactly. Assembly. It doesn't make sense. And people are even saying that, oh, once it is passed, then we must implement it. Then the question that ought to be asked, what has happened to ROPA? ROPA was an act passed by the parliament of this country, Ghana. Yet, the government of the day, upon the cries of the people, on the need to suspend the ROPA pending the appropriate time for its execution, the government of John Ajikun Kufo and the NPP felt it expedient and wise to say that, yes, this is a law that has been made. Laws are made for the people, not people created for the laws. As the good Bible says, Sabbath is made for the people, but not people for the Sabbath. So we make our laws, and we have that latitude to relax certain uh, things in the law. It is so simple and an issue to deal with. Like I said, mm. the NDC is only interested in these constituencies just to cover up for certain electoral misfortunes that may happen to them on the 7th of December. And I think that we have time to talk about these things. And it's very clear and glaring in the face of the NDC that they are losing this election. They want, it's just like when you climb a tree and you are falling, you have no hope and you just get hold of any leaf. You think that that leaf can sustain you. This cannot sustain the NDC in the 2012 election. Gideon prefers to call it political witchcraft. We'll take our first break. When we come back, we'll listen to Oreko briefly on that and then move on to the Congress issues. Welcome back. I just want to hear Oreku on the EC matter. They will move forward. Well, probably is it the EC matter or is the parliamentary matter? Mm. <laughs> EC parliamentary right. matter. EC parliamentary <laughs> matter. <laughs> Thank you. Mm. Um, once again, I would like to say um, very good evening to all your viewers mm. and um, especially my people at Kwabri West in Kumasi. I know we are in mourning, but um, everything will be fine. Um, Saturday, hopefully, we'll all be at um, Kumasi's post stadium to mourn our departed member of parliament. Um, when on this EC matter, I think um, Gideon has said a lot. What I ask, I keep asking myself, why the haste? It's this haste is bordering on indecency, if you permit me to say. Why the indecent haste? We barely, what, three months? to the general election. And as of today, probably we have about Less than 100 days, days right. to the general election. And there are so many things going on. Chaos in parliament. The, unfortunately, the judiciary is on vacation. They probably would have sorted this thing out. 
I do believe um, there's some um, interlocutory injunction that has been filed. I understand a legal petition has filed it. Right. Injunction. Now, the question is, when you look at the Local Government Act, I'm not a lawyer, so the lawyers might forgive me. Mm. You are a lawyer, you correct me if I'm wrong. The Local Government Act at 462, mm. I think that is where the EC is pinning its own its hopes. Yeah. But if you read it as a layman, mm. you find that it doesn't necessarily speak to the fact that any time a district is created, the EC must necessarily create a constituency. Constituency. No, it doesn't say that. Thank you very much. But EC seems to have got it wrong. And the government seems to be dictating the pace for the EC. EC is supposed to be an independent body, but by the government taking the first step of creating these districts, they're forcing the hand, so to speak, of the EC to erroneously create these um, districts. Constituencies. Uh, uh, constituencies. I've heard people saying that President Kufour in his time created constituencies. Mm -hmm. It's not true. President Kufour's time, 2004, uh, 2012, uh, that's it, 2004, yeah? Yeah, 2004. 2004, yes. Yeah. President Kufour's government, after the EC created constituencies, that President Kufour created districts to fit into these um, constituencies. But I hear our friends on the opposite side going on about a person. What did it, so why can't we do it? It's um, just total uh, wrong. Like Gideon was saying, I asked myself, if the government has done so well, as they claim they have done, if they've built so many schools under trees, they've done roads, they've done the, all these things that they're claiming in their green book that they've done. Why can't they just buy their time, let us go through these 2012 elections, and after that, the whole country will have patience, sit down, and then create this new, if we have to, create this new um, constituency. Personally, I think we have to be very careful. Why am I saying that? If you're not careful, we will end up with so many, how many thousand seats, uh, constituencies in the country? Who wants that? As we are speaking, there are problems with the payment of uh, MPs' uh, Sal uh, salaries. And logistics. And Common and funds not going at the time, uh, the time that they need to be at the district. Yeah. And all sorts of things that might happen. The next government might come and they might decide to um, cut um, or break uh, Manchia into five constituencies. And they can argue that, okay, NDC did it, so we are doing it. We don't need that. I think we need to have patience, civil society, political parties, all come together and dialogue, come to a consensus as to how we want to go. But this is not the time to do it. We need to go through this 2012, it's a very crucial election. We need to go through 2012 election without anybody having to complain. We want the losing party, which is of course going to be the NDC, to accept their defeat. I don't think the NDC thinks they will lose. So look at what happened in Kumasi. <laughs> <laughs> we come to that. We come to the Kumasi. <laughs> but I do believe that we should, if they think they've done so well, hmm. we should leave the whole thing as it is. Yeah. After all, they won the election on this um, uh, constituency that we have, uh, the 230, 230. constituencies. Yeah. What are they afraid of? Let us take it easy. Hasten slowly, as they say, go through 2012 elections, and after that, we all sit down and, and then see the way forward. Magidion, are you, are you confident? Look at the show in Kumasi, the, uh, uh, the founder was there, and, <laughs> you know, the NDC was desperately happy to see the founder. You know, you know, you know what? They've uh, taken over your city. There's a popular saying that I can't uh, palace, uh, that in fact, and he had him quite prinking some of <laughs> That's a big one. <laughs> you have to translate it for the benefit and of our listeners. Those of us of the MPP in Ashanti region, yes. we think that before we saw the policeman, yes. we were already running. <laughs> so it is only, not only when we see the policeman that we take to our heels. Uh -huh. We started running before uh -huh. we saw the policeman. That's right. The NDC came to Ashanti region ostensibly hmm. to create an atmosphere of having a stronghold called the Ashanti region. Yes. Mm. And Ashanti. that appeared on the mouth of the General Secretary of the NDC, John C. Sedinkert, yes. saying that the Ashanti region is the NDC stronghold. Yes. Anybody of the NDC who thinks that they're talking about 
a percentage of 30% votes in Ashanti region, and that when they get it, they have already won. Then I ask myself, when was the last time they crossed the 25 percentage line? Yeah, but, on the balance but, of probability, on the hmm. balance of the probability, mm -hmm. the NDC fairly should be thinking about 20% there are about in the 2012 elections. Because look, no matter what they say, mm. no matter what they came to do in Ashanti region, mm. they drafted masses from all over the country mm. to the region. And we are talking about a figure of around 3,000 to 5,000. Such a figure in the region, in the bastion of the NPP, cannot throw us into trepidation. Oh, so are you saying that only the delegates, they didn't attract anybody who, from within the city? Who were there? And they describe that crowd as frenetically charged, those guys giving a lot of accolades and adjectives. I ask myself, look, that figure, that crowd, we've seen it and seen it over and over. And like I said, they cannot throw us into trepidation. When the NPP Youth Wing of Ashanti region mm. even organized a youth forum at the Kumasi Polytechnic, the pressman told us that we had close to 25,000 people attending. So numbers in Ashanti region is not a problem. <laughs> and they came and did all sorts of things. One thing that preceded the Congress, and I need to talk about this, mm. was the famous complaints about posters, the Nekufuado's mm. flags being hoisted around and outside the peri uh, perimeter of the stadium. And they didn't understand. They didn't know why the president was coming and we were cladding the whole place with our posters. And I asked myself, is the NDC decreeing today that any time any president is visiting a stronghold of a political party, that party has not gotten the right to hoist posters, paste by uh, uh, posters and stuff around. Is what the NDC is telling us. All that they tried to do was to create anarchy and chaos in Ashanti region. Mm. Continue with us as per their plan into the 2012 elections because they know that us anywhere, anytime we have major voter turnout in Ashanti region, the MPP benefits and the credit goes to us. It goes to our benefit. What they want to do is to create anarchy in the region. We are too smart and wise. I'm not going to spell out, I want to be reticent on the things that we'll be doing in the 2012 election. But we want to tell them that as simple and innocuous people as the NPP and the people in Ashanti region are, we're not going to face them with their anarchy. But rather, we will stand up to them who, whatever way they understand it. That is how it must go. Let me tell you something. The NDC came to Ashanti region mm. touting a lot of developmental projects that they had brought to the people of this region. Yes. Something is going to happen in 2012. What is going to happen is that Ashanti region is going to embark on angry votes against the NDC. Angry votes. Angry votes against the NDC. Yeah. They were talking about sympathy votes yeah. when the president passed away. Yeah. I'm telling them, Ashanti region votes. It's going to be angry votes. And people are going to get out in their number. You saw what happened during the registration. Mm. They did all sorts of things, intimidation, all sorts of political shenanigans in the region, just to make sure that they count people into their rooms and their shelves they, that they could not come out to register. Yet, over 200,000 people came out and added to the existing 2.3 million that registered in 2008 to register in 2012. It tells you that the people of Ashanti region are resilient, they have fed up with the government, and they think that the NDC party, per their own style, the Great Ashanti Project and star, have never conceived in their minds to develop Ashanti region. They talk about schools under trees. Let them tell me one school under tree that they have built in Ashanti region. I want to expose the NDC today. In their own backyard, you go to a Joso Jabi Municipal Assembly. Mm. That is the municipal assembly that has produced top echelon members of the NDC in the region. Okay. A Joso Jabi Municipal Assembly is where the deputy minister for Ashanti region comes from, and Emma Wilson. She comes from a Jusu Jabe Municipal Assembly. Okay. The KMA boss, chief executive, comes from a Jusu Jabe Municipal Assembly. The famous Yamwa Ponko comes from a Jusu Jabe Municipal Assembly. The, current the NDC MC. Regional Youth Organizer mm. comes from a Jusu Jabe Municipal Assembly. The NDC Regional Chairman comes from the Jusu Jabe Municipal Assembly. If there is anything greater the NDC has done in terms of building schools under trees, then it should go to a Jusu Jabe Municipal Assembly. But apparently, if you go to the Jusu Jabi Municipal Assembly, there's an electoral area called Abenase. Abenase electoral area. It's a town there called Ejenase. 
students, pupils at a general DA primary school are going to school under trees. The rest of the regional chairman, deputy regional minister, KMA boss, municipal chief executive, regional youth organizer, all hailing from that area. Yet, the people are going to school under trees. Then you ask yourself, where have they built the schools under trees? Go to Kumasi. All major trunk roads mm. that were earmarked for graveling and whatever, whichever way the contractors were describing, the NDC have just sent all of them. Look at the airport run about Crowfoam Road. It is so sad an issue. Mm. A road that does not stretch more than three kilometers. For two, three and a half years now, the NDC has abandoned construction where what they have done to it is to spoil the whole process. That people cannot ply the road with ease and comfort. You go to Ashanti region, you don't see anything developed. The Crowfoam Market has been abandoned. All major developmental projects that were started by the MPP government, the NDC came, they have just said the famous Sofola interchange ought not to be talked about. The Asoka interchange ought not to be talked about. All the but projects. But they finished the interchange. Why have they finished? Which interchange has finished? Go to Prempe Kaliya and ask the students how they are suffering from the dust that they are inundated with every single I day. I mean the, the Asoka one. It is not finished. Let them go and commission it if they have finished. Let them go and commission it. So these are the problems that we have. Then talk about the capitation, the killer capitation that they have brought to the Ashanti region. Mm. Per the capitation, mm. the figures of people who attend the hospital have whittled down drastically. And you see, when you go to Ashanti region, all that the people have come to realize that, yes, this government does not like us. But what can we do? Let us keep quiet. Vote them out of power. Bring a government that can prosecute our agenda for us. And some of them, they say thanks that they are going to get more than 20% in the Ashanti region as they have had some time pass. Mm -hmm. Then some people may say they are living under delusion or in the Klakuku land or they are drowning in the ocean of impossibility fantasies. <laughs> that is not going to happen. <laughs> For the NDC, nothing is possible. Exactly, Everything no, no, no. is impossible. I mean, we, we will not allow that to happen. And you see, we don't want to talk so much uh, because those of us in the MPP think that, yes, this is our stronghold. Yes. Why would you want to make sure that there's chaos and anarchy in our stronghold? When it happens like that, people cannot get out to vote. So we need to manage the situation. Mm. And that is why we are managing. Nobody should get threatened. That the NDC, there's a guy called Yami, General Secretary of NDC in the region. He sits on radio and everybody will vote once. Ah, then we ask us who has been voting thousand right. times in Ashanti region. <laughs> These are things that they do. I don't get them. Some <laughs> may vote half. Yeah. And you see, this time around, yeah. we are going to make sure that people don't come out to vote. And yeah. that is all that they are trying to do. Yeah. We would contain them as we have been containing them all the time. But we just want to let the whole Ghanaian community know that Ashanti region will never ever fall to the NDC. It remains the stronghold of the NPP and we are going to make sure that we protect our ballots, protect the people of the region, not just the Ashantis. And there's this propaganda going on before maybe you go to uh, uh, Honorable. This mm. propaganda going on before their Congress. They had met, mm. eh? so cynical as they are, they had met and organized some group of guys Mm. to wield placards at the Congress of the NDC saying that, oh, Ashanti said they don't want a Nordner to be president of this country. It was oh. by divine intervention that we got to uncover this kind of thing that they were doing. But they were going and, to do it and, at their Congress. They were going to do it at their Congress. And they would say, who are holding those exactly. placards? Then, MPP people. Then they largely themselves. they were going to say that. It is the Ashantis who are doing that. Let me tell the NDC today. Like, you know I have not an Ashanti. No. I come from the Brunhafo region. Twice I have held the position of Brunhafo uh, Students Union before. Yes. And so my allegiance to the Brunhafo region is not in doubt. Yes. Yet I hold a position leading Ashanti youth of the greatest opposition political party and the stronghold of the MPP. What does it tell you? It tells you that the Ashantis are all embracing. Yes. They make sure that everybody comes into their fold. When you go to Ashanti region, you know we have around Fantin Newtown. Yes. We have Fantin Newtown. Yes. We have Moshizungo. Yes. We have Araga. And yes. all those communities. Yes. If you go to Manshia today, one of the two sets, there are chiefs belonging to other tribes who are made sub chiefs at Manshia. Yes. It tells you that the Ashanti community is a heterogeneous community. Yes. And it's in its heterogeneity, they make sure that they embrace all manner of people, irrespective of your tribe, your background, where you come from. That is the beauty about the Ashanti, and I top that up for them. Like I said, I am not an Ashanti. The way they live with me in the Ashanti, it will be difficult for you to know 
that Gideon is not an Ashanti. So that atmosphere ought to be created and let us not allow any political leader or political party by its own parochial interest and political expediency divide the people of this country. And I think that Ghanaians have seen the NDC and they know the divisional lines that they want to draw between tribal uh, communities in this country. And never should the young people in this country allow that. I'm talking about those of us who are between 50 years and 35. Those the young the people between 50 years and 35. I'm not no. talking about those who are about 50 and yet still want to See, be called now, young people in now, this country. Now, when you talk about young people, uh, you have to look at white-haired young people. And exactly. then you have to look at babies exactly. with teeth. That is a perfect description. You, you also need to look at babies sharp. with sharp teeth. <laughs> so we take our second break at this point. Welcome to Minority Caucus. Tonight we're trying to review the state of Kumasi and the Ashanti region in terms of the NDC Congress, whether or not that Congress has made any changes within the psyche of the voter in Ashanti and in particular in Kumasi and its environs. Kumasi alone has over 10 constituencies and therefore if there's change, it impacts the entire uh, region as it were. Uh, unfortunately, because of developments along the parliamentary front, we took quite a bit of time reviewing that situation. But with me, you've been listening to William Orekuedu, who is the MPP parliamentary candidate for Kwabre West, and uh, Gideon Boakun, who is the Ashanti Regional Youth Organizer. Now, Oreku, yes, uh, 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 the president spoke in Kumasi. Some say it's all PR, no substance. The new NDC has failed, so we are bringing back the old NDC to go and campaign. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. It's interesting. Um, I happened to be in Kumasi when mm -hmm. they were having their congress. Yes. And I drove through the business area, mm -hmm. Adum, Kijitia. Yeah. You know, when one goes to a town where there is a big event happening, okay. the first indication that one gets as to the uh, participation of the indigents it's the shops and the business activities that is going on. Kajit here was in full swing. I do all the shops were opened. People were going about their normal businesses. Mm. The only problem that we experienced in Kumasi was traffic. The buses, the hundreds and hundreds of buses mm. that had brought people from all over the country. And the metro mass. <laughs> yes. I'm metro sure mass. people uh, around the country had a, a very difficult day to get buses in their various districts and villages because all those buses were commandeered Kofo by bus. the NDC. Kofo, incidentally, the Kofo buses were <laughs> commandeered all over the country to bring delegates uh, to Kumasi. Yeah. Even that, I'm telling you, did not shake Ashanti region, NPP Ashanti region. Mm. They brought in so many people that through, from Kumasi to Mampong, the Bachem Road, the Bronghaf Road, Sunyani Road, the Techiman Road, all the hotels up to about 60 kilometers were full. Wow. They brought people from all over the country and still they did not get the numbers that Gideon was saying. Now, the NPP in Ashanti region, Ashanti region, needless to say, is our stronghold. Gideon was very charitable by saying that the NDC could hope for about 20% or whatever he said. 20%? Yeah. No. I am of a different opinion. People in the Ashanti region are so angry, so angry that they can About the general problems, the cost of living and the Tell failure. me about it. The way the money and the dollar and city relation is going, hmm. interest rates, you know, commercial people, as you know, are business people. Oh, yeah. And then you buy dollar today, tomorrow you go back, it's changed. You buy a bag of rice, when Kufo was exiting, you know, bag of rice, about 40, 40 cities, hmm. now 1.2 million cities. Uh, 1 .2 a, can, million. a can of sugar in old night, just after we left, was 3 cities, 50 pesos. It's now 12 cities. You can go on uh, till the kingdom come. The Kumasi people are so angry, and I have personally approached my people to voted for the NDC. Hmm and they have expressed their anger to people like myself, that they cannot wait for the 7th of December to come around so that they can actually, as Gideon put it, the anger vote, they can go and um, vote angrily against the NDC. Going to, onto the, the Congress in particular, 
NDC now clutching for straws, hoping that the Rawlings will come and um, do some magic mm. for them. Mm. But you know, when the former president started speaking, every cough that came from his mouth was applauded. It was until after they'd gone back home and inwardly digested what he had said that they realized that the man gave them conditions. Conditions that he thought the party NDC has to fulfill before they will have any chance of coming to power. Conditions like bringing sanity, so to speak, to the presidency. Integrity. He says integrity there is no integrity better. in the presidency, Absolutely. no Let's integrity in the party, and bringing no integrity, integrity in that government in the, the government. last three months that we've got left yes. before general election. To my mind, it's almost impossible. The tall order. The, as you, you said, there's boys with sharp teeth. Talk about that. <laughs> President Mahama so far has not made any, or has not given us any intention of him giving, uh, getting rid of all these boys and bringing in integrity. He hardly sits in the castle anyway. He's been going around thanking the whole Ghana, you know? And um, it's... Campaign, uh, thank you. Too. Campaign, thank you, as you said. It's um, something that is not going to wash. President Mohammed's hands are tied. The same people that President Rawlings wants him to get rid of, they are his backbone. They are the people who have propped him there. And how can he get rid of um, names I don't want to mention, the big wigs in the party who are propping him? He cannot do that. When is he, how is he going to bring integrity into the uh, presidency? The last three months that he's got left. Today I heard the spokesperson saying that the next three months they're going to go to every nook and cranny in the country. So when is he going to sit down at the castle to try and sort out problems that are festering, festering in, that, in that place? So um, Kumasi people, we are not prepared. They've gone around, like Gideon was saying, touting all the things that they've done. My own constituency, a place where Betimold comes from, Idretia, they claim that they've built a new modern school block. All that they did is an existing school. They did was to just get rid of the roof and repaint it. Suck the kids, kids um, to um, an, an annex, repainted it very quickly, and put it in their book as something that they've achieved. The Green Book. Yeah. The famous Green Book. And, and there are serious yeah. revelations here in the Green So book. many things that you've said. Ones. And Kumasi people, the Shanti region, which are stronghold, they're not going to buy it. We know it. They know it. They know that the government of um, President Mills and now John Mahama have failed. Why do they feel such a need to tell us things that are not true? Let me tell you something. I, I find it very difficult. No, no, I can, I can answer that one. Yeah. If you are not achieving, yeah. after all, they came to power with lies. They fooled the people of this country, the good people of this country, into voting them into power. One example, they told the whole country that they're going to bring one time NHI, NHIS premium. Yeah. Of course, things are hard. People bought into it. They never gave us any figures. And then people voted for them. Nana Ado's vision of um, bringing this new school, uh, free secondary school education, with figures, actually has come out the source with the source of all the funding. Probably and still, the first time, it's the first time in this country. Yeah. And still, our brothers in the um, or NDC are saying that it's not feasible, it's not possible. They said the same thing about NHIS when it first came up, that we couldn't do it. Mm. We did it. Yeah. And now they're saying the same thing about the school. And I'm just pleading with the good people of this country mm. that they should go out there and vote this um, NDC or non-performing NDC government out of um, power. Okay. Vote the non-performing NDC government out of power. Uh, we'll take our last break. When we come back, you can join us on the phone line 0302 211 Seven zero two or zero three zero two two one one seven zero three to four. So we'll take our last break now. Welcome back. Uh, Gideon has just been showing me some of his green book fictions. And uh, maybe you should share them with us, Gideon. But you can join us on the phone line, 0302-211-701-702, 0302-211-703704.
Yeah. Just, yeah. just yeah. before Gideon goes on, yeah. please, just to remind um, voters um, to check their names on the yes. register. Yeah. That's right. Because the, um, in my constituency, it's not very good at all. Mm. There are places, my hometown, for example, this decreased the numbers by 342. And you go to Afrancho, there are places where they've registered zero. That nobody has turned up at all. We went to the EC and I said that uh, polling station was not functional on the day. Indeed, according to our records, we registered 614 people. Kojo, Kojo yes. is in Tema. Hello. Uh, good evening. Yes, sir. Yes, I want to come to the program. Please go ahead, sir. Uh, uh, please, uh, what I want to tell the is that they should stop speaking the big government and go to the ground. The village people are there lying. Forget that. Tell his life about uh, the, the land of uh, uh, free education. Okay. You see? And all this, you see, the big government, but they are there lying. This is the people. Please, we beg you, don't fail us. You put don't fail us, we beg you. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. I think that we have to display some of the lies here. Uh -huh. Like, this was according to the fic fic uh, fictions of the NDC Green Book. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm Nana Yao, calling for Tidy Street. Yes, sir. I thank you very much for this program. I promise you people that Nana Kupari is going to win by all costs. If I do know that teachers up to now, they are not being paid. Do you know that? No. Yeah, if you don't know, it's the right thing that I'm telling you. We teachers are very angry with this particular performing government. And we are going to vote massively against it. Based on time districts, I show you that MPP is going to take it. And we shall win it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah. We are starting revelations here. Mm. This green book on page 84, Achuman Punya district. Mm. They have read the construction of 12 unique classroom block in Kawe Senior High School. Lawyer. In Kawe Senior High School. It's not in Achuman Punya District. It's in Achuman Webeja District. Mm. Because they are lying. Mm. They have not done anything in the Punya District. Mm. They went for a structure, brought the picture, and brought it under Achuman Punya. Mm. Agogoso Street Light, this one. Mm. Agogoso Hard Light, mm. under President Kufu. Yet they have brought this light pole and wires, indicating what electricity. What is on my life from Agogoso. Agogoso. Hello. 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 Yes, sir. Any guy is owing hospitals for five months. Hospitals are breaking down. The NDC has nothing better to offer than Ghanaians. So all Ghanaians should vote NDC out. Thank you. Thank you very much. There's another fallacy in the Green Book. Address at Chidu Master District. I'm here on my line yeah. from Pando. Hello. Yeah, good evening. Yes, sir. Thank you for the good work that you are doing. Hello. Yes, sir. We are listening to you. The whole world is listening to your multi TV. Uh huh. Uh, please, I want to make this uh, information known to you. Anytime we have um, uh, different. Batman, your, your, your line. Hello? Yes, your line. Please uh, mob stabilize yourself. Are you okay speak now? To us. Yes, go ahead. Huh. Two years now, this is the No, no, no. Tr please try and call again. We, we are losing you. Let's take a point. Call again. Hello? Upon? Uh, hello. Yes. Um, yeah, I'm a opponent from Adam Zoo. Yes, sir. In German town, the district. In fact, I'm very happy about your program. I'm always listening to it. But you could continue to hold a program. Nanado is going to win. But in German South, our program is that Nana has promised us two times that you will take it up. But none of them, the recently, the vice, the 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 vice the the primary the vice uh, president yeah. yes um, Dr. Bahmud Babia yeah yes, but the regional executive yes have 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 denied us whether you not come to Jamaica's out and not oh. this is our only problem if Nanana come here you win about ninety five percent this okay. is our main problem our but every day yeah, I'm, I'm a top army 
uh, I mean, from Obama came on debate program and saying that the health insurance is not to collapse. Them. I'm telling you that the health insurance have collapsed because they, when the information and campaign reach reaches to the people, it changes the social behavior of the people. Some people have seen that the health insurance is benefiting for them. And the servicing, uh, the servicing, the, the customer care has collapsed. Why, why, why you go there? They will give you a mudai king parasitic If in Biko is absent, then the high health insurance has collapsed. What the Amitoko family is always on the joy of them speaking. He's a great liar. Thank you very, very much. Thank you very much. Gideon. Yeah, so I was talking about justice to the master. Look at this structure. They said two unique classroom book. Mm. There are four gates on this building. Mm. Apparently suggesting mm. that it might be a four-unit classroom block. Mm -hmm. It tells you that this structure is not existent. When you go to a justice to Dumasi, they have mentioned Hiawanwu. I know Hiawanwu very well. Mm. From Dromankuma, you go to Bonyong, then you go to Hiawanwu. Mm. This structure is not there. They have lied here again. Then you come here, a computer now unit teacher's bungalow at Insutamai Catholic School. Abba, Insutamai School, mm. this building was built by President Kufo. Mm. Painted, everything was done. They came, they brought the picture and said that they had built it. Look at this midwifery free school. Mm. The school itself issued a press statement that this building was not built under the NDC Better Ghana agenda. President Kufo <laughs> built this all. Yet they <laughs> brought it in the, this green book and indicated that it is the NDC that has built this. So I don't get them. They are going around lying and lying. In a Still short Better Ghana. Still Better Ghana. <laughs> Yet people are not feeling the presence of these Better Ghanas in their pockets. And what, what is so much awful and harrowing in these situations yeah. is when they sit down yeah. and want to throw dust into the eyes of the people yeah. and again want to win the sympathy of the people and say that, oh, you know what, uh, when the president died, uh, blah, 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 and so let us have sympathy and vote for President Mama to continue the better Ghana agenda. Then the president said that he's promising it will be keke. <laughs> Why didn't the president say it will be keke? <laughs> you understand? Be now, you be because he knows that they have woefully failed the people of this country. Yeah. He's promising a better in generation future. in the future. Still That's better true. Ghana <laughs> into the future. <laughs> Look, the accounts have something that they call Danfanye <laughs> Yenabafo. How much more Terrier? Terrier is running at drift. I mean, I think it's very clear, very, very clear to the good people of this country yeah. that um, the Some NDC government is just a government propaganda and lies. Yeah. They have nothing good for this country, and it's about time the good people of this country gave the MPP and the NADO the opportunity to come and um, uh, show us what governance is about. Okay. And I think that lastly, Saturday marks the funeral of, of the former Ashanti regional minister, my, mm. my own Imanu yes. and okay. then Friday also marks the memorial lecture of Bafo Akutu, the yeah. founder of NLM and the mm. UP. And I think that I also, on behalf of the Jabia Ya Royal family of Bama Traditional mm. Council, we want to extend a heartfelt gratitude to all family members, friends and sympathizers who joined us Mark the final funeral rites of our father, uncle, very reverend Ernest Mensa at Boma, who was the Mekwai Methodist Superintendent Minister. Uh, we thank God for the successful family yeah, gathering, and we think that God will keep faith to the family. Masisi, Tena, Fifi, and Vera. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Honorable Uswan Sansfino. Yes, that's Saturday. Yes, that's yes, Saturday. Yes, that's Saturday. And then there's a, a memorial and lecture memorial for Bafo on Friday. On yes. Friday at so, the UST. It is mm -hmm. important to realize that teachers haven't been paid. Whilst the NDC is doing PR and raising their arms in the air and thinking that PR is going to win this election, we have issues about jobs, we have issues about education, we have issues about health. That must be solved. Above all, we have issues about integrity. There's no integrity in the presidency, no integrity in the government, no integrity in the party. Please. Let's see you do something. But I doubt if anything can be done before the seventh. Time is too Vote short, wisely yeah. and vote MPP. Brilliant. It's been Minority Caucus. Good night. Thank you.